This video is sponsored by FS Academy. Hello Captains, were you one of those that were excited by the introduction of the Mini FCU, but then in the same breath equally disappointed that it wasn't compatible with the Phoenix A320? Well, I've got a bit of good news for you. In this video, I'll show you how to get that compatibility and take you through the installs step by step. This is a sim hanger. My name's Mark. Welcome aboard and let's get started. Let's start off by having a quick look at the Mini FCU in action in the Phoenix A320. The short hop, which is edited really only for the parts that interest us, is from John Lennon International in Liverpool across to Dublin in Ireland. I'm flying using live weather and thankfully, well, it's a pretty clear day today. But what I will say from the outset is that the Mini FCU with the mods for the Phoenix A320 worked absolutely perfectly. No problems, no hitches for me. So let's get up and away and then we can test it out. Let's enable auto thrust. There we go. I've been toggling that so that works fine. Now autopilot 2. That's good. Back to autopilot 1. And what's happening on the Mini FCU is replicated in sim. We have a flight plan and we're in manage mode. Let's pull out the dial for speed to go to manual and I can adjust the speed. The latency is not bad at all, hardly noticeable and we can see on the PFD the speed is starting to decrease. Press it back in, back to manage mode. Let's come out of nav mode and go into heading mode which again is indicated on the PFD. Now changing the heading and the aircraft is responding accordingly. So that's all good, working fine. Press the dial in to go back into nav mode. And the aircraft starts resuming and following the track exactly as anticipated. Let's see if we can toggle the speed, which we can. We're currently climbing to our cruise altitude of 22,000 feet. Climbing at about 1,900 feet per minute. Let's hit the expedite button. This should increase our climb and expedite our climb to our cruise, which is exactly what it's doing. And now over 4,000 feet per minute. This Moby flight configuration seems to be working exactly as expected. Now climbing at 4,900 feet per minute, speed reducing. We're just about to reach our cruise altitude. So let's adjust and change the altitude and make sure that the aircraft reacts to that. I'm going to dial it down to 12,000 feet and look for a descent rate of 1,500 feet per minute. Let me just quickly dial that in. There we go. Aircraft is now descending 12,000 feet at 1,500 feet per minute. Let's just reduce the speed a little bit just to be on the safe side. Once again, we can see the speed is starting to drop off. We're not far from Dublin International now. Let's engage approach mode. And it's picked up the ILS. We're turning on final, runway 10 right. What do you like in an emergency? Well, this video sponsor FS Academy can help prepare you for the worst with 12 individual standalone modules covering both GA and airliners that place you in a cockpit with a trained airline pilot next to you to guide you through when the unexpected happens. Okay, you need to return to LaGuardia. Turn left heading of 220. Commander from FS Academy is available via the marketplace for Xbox and PC. You can check out my review video link in the notes below. Let's now see how we get this installed. Didn't take long for the community to find a solution. A big thanks to Vin Kaizen and iFly SimX. Our first port of call is to head over to flightsim.to. Everything I'll show you today is freeware. A number of links show the file is not available, so please use the link listed below. Everything you'd need to know is shown on this website, but let's run through it quickly together. First step, with your Mini FCU plugged in and on, head over to your device manager and make sure the USB serial CH340 is seen. The software won't work 
If it can't find the device, you should note that the Mini FCU data link software, which provides compatibility with other 320s, is not required and should not be running. Step 2 is to download and install Phoenix Quartz. This provides the display that we need on the Mini FCU unit. The download link is right here on the page. Place the file in any directory that suits you. We'll complete all the necessary downloads before we worry about installation. Step 3 is download the Mobi Flight software and once again store in a suitable location on your hard drive. Mobi Flight is a very versatile and useful utility popular with cockpit builders for configuring various hardware. And now finally as step 4 let's download the actual configuration file itself from flightsim.to. Select the download option and away you go. It's also worth noting there are detailed and step-by-step -step instructions with the files and it's very worthwhile reading it all before starting any install as there are a number of configurations that are absolutely important otherwise it won't work. If you do run into any difficulties during the install I recommend that you visit the discords of Mini Cockpit and especially of MobiFlight and there's also a tutorial video on YouTube from iFly Simex. I'll leave a link to that video in the notes below. So I've now completed all the downloads required and placed them in a suitable location. We have the MobiFlight Setup EXE which will install MobiFlight for you. We also have the Quartz install and the FlightSim.to download for the Phoenix A320. I've also got a restore firmware. This is available directly from Mini Cockpit, but you probably won't need it, so we won't be looking at it today. So let's get on with it and install Quartz. Double click to install. It's a tiny program and installs very, very quickly. But before you hit that install button, a few configs are required. If you normally fly the A320, then hit auto start with Microsoft Flight Simulator. And secondly, and most importantly, you need to select one other configuration, and that is change configuration to raw value LVAR mode. This is essential. Then select install. You may have to install the net runtime if you don't already have it. Select yes when your user account control pops up. Chances are your antivirus will not like it. So make sure you exclude this program from the normal scans. Otherwise it won't complete the install. And it'll tell you finish successfully when it's done. Only takes a second or two. That's done now, so let's go ahead and install Moby Flight. Leave it to install in its default location. I recommend create a desktop shortcut. And Moby Flight will now start, telling us there's an update available. It will then install the WASM module. Mine says not installed because I've already done that. Then it'll just take a moment or two to complete the install. It'll come up with a number of prompts, just hit cancel at this stage. If this is the first time you're loading MobiFlight. We need to upgrade the MobiFlight version. So from the extras menu, select settings. MobiFlight requires version 10.0.3 as a minimum. So check the box, yes, I would like to receive beta version updates. And secondly, and very importantly, make sure automatically perform retrigger action is unchecked. Now close MobiFlight and restart it. You're prompted for the update. Go ahead and install that, following very much the same process as we did before. Once again, you'll get a number of prompts as the program boots up. And once again, at this stage, you can just hit cancel. But we can see from the top, we're now in version 10.02.3. This version is compatible with the Mini FCU. Select MobiFlight modules from the top. MobiFlight can see something's connected but doesn't know what it is. Note, depending on your configuration, your COM port may vary. Right-click on Compatible, Update Firmware, Mini Cockpit, then select Mini Cockpit Mini FCU. This is now overwriting the firmware of your Mini Cockpit. Don't panic, we can always revert if we want to. I'll show you that a little bit later on in the video. Firmware update successful, select OK. Now select Upload Board's default config and then select OK and it will update. 
Once that's done, if you want to, you can select Save and you get an option to save it in a place of your choice for future reference. And whilst not necessary, I recommend at this point we shut down MobiFlight for the last time and restart it. So MobiFlight now recognizes our device and has a default config. But it's not necessarily the exact config that we want for the Phoenix. To get that, we go to File, we select Open. Remember the zip file that we downloaded from flightsim.to? I'll navigate on your PC to where those are. And you'll note that the zip file contains three different config files. You can select which one you prefer. My preference was the one that I've highlighted here. I felt it was the most realistic and responsive. Select that and then open. This part is important. Select Mini FCU and then select Assign. And now very importantly, make sure you save. And basically that's it, we're done. There is a test option which you can run just to see everything happening. And the lights on the Mini FCU, which at the time you updated the firmware would have gone out, will now be flashing. I do recommend, however, that you select Auto Run. So whenever you start MobiFlight, it auto runs this config for your Mini FCU. If you decide at any time to revert back to the Data Link software for the Mini FCU, under MobiFlight Modules, right click and simply select Reset Board. It'll ask you, are you sure you want to do this? Select OK. And MobiFlight will now remove the firmware update that it previously installed and restore the Mini FCU to its original state. To get everything up and running, I found if I started Microsoft Flight Simulator, my Phoenix software starts automatically as I have auto run on, and then I start MobiFlight. If you didn't select Quartz to auto run, then you can start that as well, and you'll be up and away. In closing, a quick comment. MobiFlight can provide not just compatibility for the Phoenix A320, but a range of other aircraft. Visit the Mini Cockpit Discord for further links. Well, I hope you found this useful and informative. As always, stay well, look after yourselves. I'll see you all again very soon. And bye for now.